having graduated with a first-class master's degree, Helen Nottage has gone on to become one of the UK's most unique ceramic artists, pushing the boundaries with the elaborate and detailed work she creates. Wow, children love stories, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I think, um, sort of obviously, when I was a child, I loved fairy tales. Um, I think mythology... Like when I was little, there was this film called Clash of the Titans. Okay. It was like from the 80s. And Day of the Dead, I think it was just visually I liked it. And yeah. then sort of yeah. finding out more about it. I really like the idea of this land of the forgotten. Or if you don't remember your ancestors, mm -hmm. remember people that have passed on. Uh, they kind of don't get to live on. So, yeah. so they sort of yeah. live on in a way by you remembering them. So I really like that idea. It's all to do with flower memes as well. So I really like yeah. the language of flowers. Yeah. So you're, you're drawing on, on the beauty of something which is natural. And yeah. It's a natural process, isn't it? Yeah. This piece, it's, it's based on Circe, the Greek, the Greek sorceress. The main form of it, I use various moulds. So I've got a body cast, separate moulds of my hands. And then the head I model as a form, solid, and then I make a mould of the model. There's a terracotta crank and there's like this white stoneware clay that I use uh, mainly. It's all porcelain, the flowers. And the hair I made by using a, like I got a sack and unravelled it all. I've built like underneath a sort of supporting structure just in the terracotta crank. And then I've dipped... Um, the, the jute fibres into the slip, it's like a, a black clay. In the story she has a, a magical bowl that's bronze, so I've put this bronze glaze on the inside. Inside the bowl, um, there's a part of where she's been banished to the island Ayaya after she's turned um, the nymph Scylla into a big multi-headed monster. <laughs> <laughs> and she gets banished to an island and she kind of hones her craft there and she makes this spell to draw her familiar to her and these are the flowers that she uses to make that spell so there's um, yellow jasmine, crocus, iris and the cypress root. These are sort of lino cuts and then I use slip to print the design on. It is fascinating to hear the story behind your piece, Circe. And here it is displayed how it should be, which is hanging on a wall. This is like with the transfer and the luster, that's three firings. So these are like commercial decals um, and they're printed in enamels on transfer paper. Like tracing paper, I'll just trace around a petal. And then I use that to cut out sort of an area of a different kind of transfer. And then you put it into water and it just sort of floats off the backing paper. So it does take quite a long time actually to do all the different designs. So with the gold, it is actual gold, sort of in oh, a wow. suspension. Okay. Sort of, it's a memento mori, but it's also looking at life cycles generally and it sort of death being part of life. Yeah. And that there's there's a lot of beauty in, in the process of the cycle. You know? yeah. Butterflies, which are obviously symbolic of being very ephemeral, and that's yes. also the cycle as well. So. A bit of a nervous moment taking stuff out of the kiln, because yeah, you're not entirely so, sure. You, yeah. You're just hoping that it's all worked out. Yeah. And especially with things in porcelain as well, because it really can warp depending on like where the weight is lying it can kind of warp in really strange ways but i think the surfaces are quite expressive um yeah. and it's more to do with sort of life cycles and organic decay generally so these are cast from my hands okay do you create a mold of yeah so it's a plaster mold okay. um this one is a three pieces. You cast the bottom of the foot by sort of placing the foot in a little sort of section of a little area and place the foot in and then okay. build a wall up to the centre of the foot and kind of pour one side of that cast and then do the other side. So before I screen print, I'll try, I've got a flat plaster back that I paint a design on in slip and then I'll transfer that onto the sheet and then I print on top of that with slip. Okay. Yeah, and then I just sort of cut it up and... Um, arrange it inside a mould and then that comes out as one piece and then as the years go on afterwards. Ooh. Well they're little moulds of okay. fossils yeah. and, and shells that I then I'll kind of press that into the mould then I'll cut those out and put them inside that mould, okay. the other mould. 
There's yeah. so many more. <laughs> yeah, and then there's little things like the shells here, they're put on afterwards. The slip goes on before it's fired, okay. and then after it's fired, I use mainly copper oxide, which I sort of paint all over, and then I wash that back and it just kind of sits in the cracks so it really brings yeah. out the texture. Clear glaze, I've got some matte glazes, and then I paint those all over and then wash those back as well. Yeah. It seems like there's so there's many layers and stages. There's lots of processes yeah. that are involved. Yeah. Gosh, that has been amazing. Thank, Thank you so you. much, That's Helen. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>